Democracy has no way to ensure liberty. In fact, in a democracy, the majority are incentivized to coerce minorities. Don't believe me? Stick around for a bit and I'll show you why that's the case. First, I must address the counterpoint to the free markets as expressed by Adam something. He borrows the famous coconut analogy, popularized by Vosch. The hypothetical goes as follows. One day, you and a fellow man are marooned on a desert island. You wake up to find the other man has woken up before you and has collected all of the coconuts on the island. Seeing no other available food, you ask him if he may give you some so that you will not starve. He responds that he will give you coconuts on the condition that you suck his penis. What is shocking is that the exact same people who tweet how sex work is real work seven times a day will call the coconut man coercive. But to hammer that point in, I present you an analogy on the flip side. Imagine I have a disease where I will die in a matter of days should I not have sex with a woman, but no woman wants to have sex with me. To be consistent, people who say that you may seize coconuts and that the coconut man is coercing you would say that I may rape women and that prostitutes would be coercing me. Now it is worth pointing out that in the video where Adam forwards his criticisms, he displays a lack of steel manning capabilities. A steel man is the opposite of a straw man, it is where you accurately depict your opponent's views. He shows he does not understand the free market position by setting up a dichotomy between anarcho-capitalism and free market capitalism, saying that ANCAPs want total privatisation of everything in a stateless society, whereas free marketeers are fine with a state so long as it doesn't warp the economy. This shows he lacks an understanding of what the economy is. It is not some abstract entity one may infringe on in a vacuum. The economy is us, it's people interacting. Before you accuse me of misinterpreting, he states later on that free markets are not opposed to totalitarian states, nor states providing public services or infrastructure. I don't know about you, but redistributing wealth from people through taxes towards infrastructure projects and welfare programmes doesn't sound like the most free market policy. His main criticism of free markets is that they are not democratic, as in the boss gets to make the choices over how the business is run. But there are two problems with this. One, democracy does not imply a consent, and two, a worker-employer relationship is consensual, implying no rulers or coercion. To demonstrate my first point, simply consider what a democracy is. In its essence, it means that 50% plus one get to dictate policy. So in essence, democracy would allow lynch mobs, gang rape, and any number of other group-based violence. As in these instances, the majority agree that the crime should occur. Many will protest at this point that democracy can only vote in certain issues, not whether someone should be subjected to sex, but this simply forces me to ponder where the line is drawn. If you can't vote on whether to rape someone, why can you vote on whether to rob them in order to fund public services? As for the consensual nature of the worker-employer relationships, consider a desert island where Crusoe and Friday live. If Crusoe trades some of his fish for Friday's coconuts, they have made a voluntary trade. It would be ridiculous to say that either party is ruling the other, as they are not imposing rules on the other. Now, either party may impose any number of terms for them to accept the trade. Friday may tell Crusoe he will only trade coconuts if Crusoe tells him how to build nets. This does not make Friday a ruler. Now apply this to the worker-employer relationship. The worker has a skill that the employer would like for them to utilise in service of his aims. The worker agrees to do this if and only if they are compensated for their work, and the employer agrees. Notice that this does not confer any right on the part of the worker to dictate how the employer must organise his workplace. It also allows for all of the many rules an employer may wish to have for the employees. He simply needs to stipulate these rules as terms in the contract. Should these terms not be obeyed, he will refuse to continue trading with the employee. In essence, he fires them. Now before I go into taking apart Adam's tirade against union busting, I ask that you hit the like button if you want more content that accurately depicts free market capitalism. So, Adam cannot help but blurt out that union busting is against the law in the US every few sentences. This is entirely irrelevant. After all, under the Nazi regime it was perfectly legal to murder scores of innocent Jews. The principle at hand here is whether the action is aggressive. No free market thinkers against unions that voluntarily form, and these unions may even engage in collective action. The right for me to quit does not change if other people are also quitting. Where unions become a problem is when they are granted special privileges by the state, which is a near universal policy in the West. To demonstrate his anti-union busting point, he uses the example of Tesla, saying that some employees handing out leaflets were, quote, harassed by three security guards. But he then elaborates that this harassment consisted of the guards warning the employees that they could be fired for their behaviour, and to reiterate, firing them would be perfectly legitimate. Elon is in no way obliged to continue trading with them. Adam continues his anti-Tesla story by saying that Elon tried to convince them to not unionise and offered them promotions. A truly horrific action. To top this off, he had the nerve to fire someone who was criticising, sorry, harassing their anti union co-workers. But just you wait, because Tesla banned employees from wearing pro-union t-shirts. And I assume by Adam's outrage here that he would be against businesses requiring masks. In fact, take the Redux show. Would Adam be outraged by a school banning naked teachers? Or a restaurant banning blackface? I cannot imagine he would be so consistent in his opinion. The true cherry on top of Adam's anti-Tesla rant is when he tried comparing not giving people stock options to murdering them. Adam goes on to point out how dreadfully challenging it is to switch workplaces or move to a different city if you don't like the terms imposed. Now, the fact that something is tricky for a person does not confer a right to them to aggress on others to make their life easier. Let's adjust my sex disease analogy from above to demonstrate this point. I might be in a relationship with a woman who is having regular sex with me, but she says she will only continue this relationship if I do the dishes every day. I don't like doing the dishes, but it would be super tricky for me to find another woman to have sex with me. Would we say that I am therefore being coerced, and as such the state should come in and force her to continue having sex whether she wants to or not? What's more, imagine it's a poly relationship with a few other men like me. Could we vote on whether she has sex with us tonight, thereby democratising this relationship? 
I think we can all see how absurd and disgusting of a society that would be. So, yes, we free market capitalists do take the super mean position that if you have no job prospects, you're forced to move to a place where you do, assuming you want a job, that is. But that is only because we like to be consistent and say if you want any relationship that nobody in your hometown consents to, you must go elsewhere. I can't imagine Adam would be fine with the state forcing a local woman to sleep with me because I don't want the inconvenience of moving. Adam opened his video with a thesis that both free market capitalism and anarcho-capitalism would lead to horrifically oppressive societies. And his demonstration of that thesis for anarcho-capitalism is that Amazon would become the state. Yeah, his proof that ancapism would lead to a horrible society is that it would lead to a horrible society. He provides no supporting argument as to why we should expect some giga firm to form into a state. He just says that it would happen. What is extra amusing about this criticism is he is essentially saying that anarcho-capitalism is bad because it might turn into a state, which calls into question why he advocates a state in the first place if they are such awful things. 